the glory. Every syllable. See, that's why y'all, I wish so many people would talk to me when they say ain't no J. The Hebrew language say ain't no J, so there can't be no Jesus. Because history said the J didn't pop up until 500 years ago. You ain't dealing with the God of alphabet. In the beginning was the word. You're dealing with the God of language. The God that take foolish things of this world and confound the wise. He can give you a J then and take it back away. Praise the Lord. So if it ain't no J, you mean people didn't get no joy until 500 years ago? If it wasn't no J, you mean people didn't have no justice? If it wasn't no J, there will be, never be a just God. Praise the Lord. If wasn't no J, then it wasn't no Joseph either. If it wasn't no J, it wasn't no job. What I'm trying to tell you, saints of God, it is foolishness to try to grab bits and pieces of God and think you know him. Amen. Praise the Lord. You got to let God reveal himself. And like you have said, in situations that have no logic to them. So that's why people are trying to figure out the Hebrew language didn't have a J. See, it's not logical. For it to just pop up. Well, God's got up. That ain't me. He can do anything. But fail. So we're trying to figure him out. So pastor's looking to get on YouTube and, and, and deal with this witch that's putting it out there. Oh, yeah. I ain't scared. Send me, Lord. I'll go. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Look. If it was, if I lived in the house by myself, come to my house. I wouldn't want to you know, mess with nobody's peace. Uh, uh, but if I lived by myself, I would invite witches to my home. And let's go at it. Bring your whole covenant with you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So man that drives the neighborhood that got stamped on his truck, Warlock. I'm trying to find him. I'm tired of you driving through my neighborhood. Amen. I find out where he lives. I saw him doing the whole witchcraft thing in the front yard. And I'm telling you, I'm looking for God to send me over there. I've been praying, send me, Lord, send me. Send me. I ain't scared. I want you to send me. Praise the Lord. I want to go at it with this warlock. I want the Lord to show his might, his power. I want God to make a difference between these witches. I don't want to be trying to figure out which witch. Bring them all. Let them all come. Amen. And let God manifest himself. There's none like the Lord. When you got the Holy Ghost, you got power over all of the power of your enemy. Then what devil out here can counteract the power of God? If God is for you, who can be against you? Praise the Lord, loved ones. And that's all you need to know. Keep it simple, y'all. Keep it basic. Whatever you do, God, are you with me? And that's all you need to know. And he, he, now he performs. So we come out of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his love and the multitude of things. Amen, loved ones. Amen. And pick it up with verse number five. First Corinthians chapter one. <coughs> and we're speaking on involved with Jesus. Not involved with the church building. Not involved with people. Involved with your maker. If he's your maker, then he will always make a way. Praise the Lord. If he's your maker, he will always make a way. He don't need anyone to help him make the way. Right now, he's making a way. 
Don't look for how. Just know it will manifest. Hallelujah. Every one of you, you know this to be true. You can uh, confirm it with your spirit. Every time you got a testimony, you didn't see it coming. Every time he brought you out, you didn't see it coming. You, and look, you had ideas. Amen. You sought different ways. And then he still blew your mind. Praise the Lord. Whenever God blow your mind, it's gonna be it's gonna appear to be foolish. Verse number five, that in everything ye are enriched by him. Did you hear me hear me say everything? In everything. You are enriched. Look, in everything, he, he, whatever it is, he is God. I'm going to enrich you. In everything. Are we all in the same church? Amen. Praise the Lord. In everything. Praise the Lord. He says, so, in all utterance and in all knowledge... And everything spoken and everything you're going to learn, it's going to be God in it all. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's, I'm not suggesting nobody use profanity in here. But he's God of I use that too. When I'm finished with you, I'll use everything. He used, He let Peter, I, I'm not condoning this mess, but he let, he knew Peter would curse and swear. And still chose him to be a witness. Knew it's messing you big time. But I'm still going to use you. Until the mess is dissolved. Because he now knows Jesus is his resolve. It takes some time for God to work with you to get you involved with him. The more you are involved with God, here it says, the more issues are dissolved by God. The more you are involved with God, the more issues are dissolved by God. That's why the devil always try to keep us that have Christ divided. It's his job. He don't care how long you've been saved. It's his job. How can I divide Christ? Now, he'll use circumstances, but it ain't the circumstance. He's actually dividing you from Christ. He's, he's stopping you and I from being separated. Look, not, I'm fully persuaded, okay, for now, that nothing should separate me. Now, look, we don't see that we're being separated from the law because it's the circumstance that we are focusing on. Amen. But actually, when it comes down to it, a root of bitterness will grow because I got, actually got separated from the love of God. Praise the Lord, loved ones. Amen. Anyhow. Amen. Verse 6, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, you know God has proved that he's been faithful. Praise the Lord. He's proved that he comes through time and time again. Amen. When we're not faithful, he proved how faithful he is. How do I know? Every day you wake up, he was faithful to renew mercies and compassions that did not fail. He proved it whether, whether we liked waking up or not, whether we understood why we woke up, whether you woke up with hangovers, hungovers, we tore up from the flow up. It does not matter if you woke up with anger, woke up bitter, woke up mad as, as you went to sleep. It does not matter. He's a God of, I'm still faithful. I'm still confirming. I'm still confirming. I'm giving you a chance that you did not take on yesterday. I'm giving you a chance to get the love of God to overtake you today. Praise the Lord. Anyhow. Why? Because today he wants me more involved. The more involved, the more things get resolved by Jesus. Verse 7. So that ye come... Behind and no gift. God, I'm coming. I don't have nothing but me. I have no gift to bear. In other words, the reason why I have no gift, because I recognize everything I have is because of you. 
So I really don't have nothing of my own. Everything I have, you gave me. For what can I give you, God? What? I can give you my praise. That's an offering that you don't have. That's an offering I volunteer. I give you me. That's an offering, my God. I give you freely. I have no gifts. Uh, we're in a world of trying to pay God off. Things I want to do. I want to please you with this, God. I want to please you with that. And I want to please you with this. Here's God. Give me you. You're giving, you're giving me everything but you. No, like the song, the little drummer boy. I have no gifts to bring, but these drums. Paul, rub a pum pum. Because I don't have nothing. Amen. I remember I tried that as a kid. Got beat down by the teacher. Teacher asked me, she said, can you play the drums? I said, yes, I can. It was just in my mind. They brought some drums. And I was supposed to play the song, uh, the little drummer boy. I didn't play one note. I froze, and I didn't know how to play it. So Miss Sturgis, I never forget her. Praise the Lord. Told me, stick out your hands. With that ruler, and I just had enough, so she went to swing up. Mm-mm. And said, so, stick your other hand out. Mm-mm. Now she's mad. And where am I? Running out. Running home. I'm telling my daddy on you. Because you ain't going to be hitting me. He, look, he went up there and woke her out. I never got hit again. Look, so look, it don't matter, y'all. You may be trying to do something good. But God will back you up. No matter how inspired the enemy will be to destroy you or hurt you. Praise the Lord. So many of you, as you go witness, okay, you may be all that only in your mind. Get out there, forget all the scriptures you rehearsed. <laughs> Memorize it. <laughs> and it's like, you know how I go. You remember all this stuff after the warfare's over. Uh, what I should have seen. You know what? Uh, and the thoughts come to you so clear. The scriptures are just so wow. And then, what about those others that you hear scriptures that you forgot? And all of a sudden they come up. Oh, I heard that scripture in so long. So it's all about Jesus being involved. Verse number 8. Who shall also confirm you unto the end? To the end God will be speaking on your behalf. That ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at this y'all. Here's God. I'm staying with you to the end. I'm going to make you blameless. That means God has to take away the blame and the blamer. That means God is going to have you so perfect. Watch this, y'all. Look at the, the definition of God's perfect. It's, it is not found in the dictionary, but it is found in your Bible. Mark, this is in your Bible. Mark the perfect man, for the end of that man is, that's God's definition. It is not in Webster's Dictionary. Now, okay, look at the goal of God to make you no longer blamed or to, to the point that you are blameless. So it is the operation of God and what he's doing in everybody's life is to bring peace. He's marking the perfect man. Now you can understand why he can put the scripture out that so many people have found controversy with that there's nobody perfect. Well, you can't make God a lie. If I find one scripture that says he spoke perfect about somebody, then everybody else got to be lying. He says, have, told Satan, have you not considered my servant Job a perfect and upright man? Because he's in a place of peace. The mess, look, the mess had not come yet. And then now the peace get disturbed, but when he was considered, he was peaceful. Amen. And perfect in it. Praise the Lord. Whenever his kids was acting up, he was just giving a sacrifice. Kept going. 
he wasn't disturbed by his seven boys partying every night. It's a party every night. Wasn't disturbed by it. He, oh, God, I'm just going to give you an offering for these kids. And kept going. Even say knew he's only the way he is because of what he has. But let me do some things here. Same way with us. Satan have considered you. And, and we forgot that he have asked God, let me do some things. Let's see if they hold on now. Let's see if they still be loving one another now. Let's see if they be forgiving now. Let's see if they will walk up right before me now. Because everything going good, they perfect and upright. But let me stir up the pot. Let God break up some follow ground. Because the ultimate God is to give you real peace. Not pieces of it. Not worldly peace. But spiritual peace. Can I be settled in an unsettling situation? No, that's not possible unless God does it. So he's a God of Let me stir up this pot. And then tell you, after you've suffered a while, <laughs> I'm going to strengthen you. Praise the Lord. I'm going to establish you. I'm going to settle you. And I'm going to make you perfect. So here's God. Y'all, you don't know how unsettled you are until he bring an unsettling situation. You have no idea that how the depth of God's peace goes and the instructions that we are to adhere to or get with as he speaks to us in a way of a test that all the tests look like mess but every child of God that take the test come out blessed. There are no exceptions to the rule. Even as you are brought nigh unto death. Paul put it like this in Ephesians. Death only came because of the work of the ministry. That's all. Many of you, you weren't even going through nothing like you're going through until you got saved. I mean, you tasted some mess and went to the world and got your part in deliverance. But only in God, he make you trust and wait on him. And then flip the script on all of us and tell you, be of good courage. Because you're going to have your tribulation. But also I got a God that says, I've overcome this stuff. Bank on God. Get involved with Jesus. Because people are doing everything that they want to do today and in the church world today. I mean, they're bringing the world in. I want to do what I want to do. And that's religion. Holiness con controls you. So that's why you call a disciple. You are a disciplined person. You can't heal yourself. You can't get out of stuff because you think you have an answer to get out of it. You must. Just like with Jesus, everybody got to come by him. Whatever it is, you got to come by him if you're going to plan on getting in the door of deliverance. Hey, look. Even Paul put it like this. He couldn't preach unless a door was open. Look, And then he said when you get to Asia, the Holy Ghost said don't preach when you get there. God must control everybody and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, loved ones. Yeah. Hey, and we have to be willing to be in agreement with his control. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm glad that scripturally everything you can go through and things you ain't never heard of is written in this Bible. How do I know? The Bible says there's so much mess that's, that we deal with and that others have dealt with and been delivered. He said we have so great a cloud of witnesses. He said the heavens have so many witnesses of all people. Look, angelic host is standing in line of what deliverers have come to mortal man. Those that have died before us 
just standing in line, let me testify. No, let me testify on how that I was in this and the grace of God was in it with me. How that I was in this, I never felt the grace of God. Never understood the grace of God. Didn't even know that their grace was this rich. But God have ordered, have ordered the steps of richness to come to me and to abound in the grace of God. That I come out like he spoke more than a conqueror. Because I am not supposed to be an ambassador for Christ and being brought to shame. They send me to a foreign country and tell others you can't go. But your steps get ordered. But but they're they're bombing over there. They're shooting anything. He is a God of it won't happen to you. If you go, you'll be the only one I go with. You will go and tell it on the mountain. But can you tell it in the valley? I want to shout it. And on on top. I don't want to talk about it in this valley. But in the valley, something is growing to let you know I'm still here. Something beautiful is happening in the valley. You look over there, you're so used to seeing weeds and thorns and cactus. There's a lily over there. To remind me the beauty of God is still in my circumstance. For he is my lily of the valley. Praise the Lord, loved ones. Still reading here, loved ones, in verse 9. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. That there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. This is why you and I, y'all, either you're going to help someone that's in trouble or hinder them that's in trouble. Either we stick an arm out to help bring them out. Or we do like so many people just step over there because we're caught up in our own warfare, our own living, our own lifestyle, our own time for me. And forget there are others that God is trying to get us, get out of the division, saints of God, and get into the addition of God that God want to add to the thing. And he'll let you get a earshot of hearing it. And for you and I not to avoid it. It don't matter that I keep helping all the time. All right, all God has to do is take away. And you'll be in the other boat asking, give me, give me, give me, give me. You should be glad God have anointed you with some abundance to bless somebody. Abundant prayer. Abundant fast. Some people can fast more than others. Some people have studied longer than others. Some people have memorized scriptures better than others. He's got, I'm calling on you. You much given, much is required. You got a lot, I'm looking for a lot from you. You should be glad God has put on your plate more than you can handle. That means give out more, more, and more. Because there's more I require out of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hey, top of higher. Hey, hey, hey. So much to be grateful for. And so much to give. And God. Don't worry about trying to store up all the time. Store up your testimonies. Store up the things God has done for you. This I recall in my mind. Because why do I recall it? Because I recall stored up stuff that's getting clogged up by the devil. But I recall in my mind, my God, that God renewed some stuff today. I don't have to be all fuddy duddy and looking like I've, you know, I've eaten life in bitter stages. My God, I can express Jesus in my life. Somebody said it. My God, to God be the glory, they saw the light. 
I was talking to this nurse. I never told her nothing. I was just talking about the love. She said, you should be a pastor. I said, duh, I am. She said, I know it. She said, I, I know I'm a doctor here, but here's my extension. Will you keep calling me? Well, because you met the great physician, but you didn't know it. The real healer of hidden causes. Hidden causes of cures that the world don't have. The God that says, I do cures today and tomorrow. And look at the response that we are to give the enemy. He said, you tell that little fox this. You tell Mr. Smart Alec. You tell Mr. Mark me. You tell the one that just think that I don't have the answers. You tell them that my God says, I still do what I do. Yesterday, and I do it today. And if you wake up tomorrow, forever be pressed upon you. What you want from me, God? I want you to press for the mark, for the prize. For the high calling of God. That's what I want from you. I want you. When others say takes two. With their logic. And you'll be able to get over the hump. When God said it ain't two. I want you to take. Just leap for joy. And I'll bring you over. And then when you get over. You're going to sing the song. How I got over. My soul looks back and wonder. How I got over. How did I get out of this? Because God calls you and I to run through troops. Instead of I'm in an anxiety, panic stage of looking at, look at all the enemy I have to fight. And God said, will you look up? For they that are for me are more than they that are against me. Will I look up for a change? Will I walk? Upright. In order to walk upright, you got to keep looking up. Praise the Lord. Amen, loved ones. Verse 11, he said, For it have been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. And he says, Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am Paul, and I am of Apollos. Look, this is how these different religions form. Everybody want to be something. Everybody want to follow something but Jesus. Praise the Lord. He says, so in verse, uh, uh, at the bottom of verse 12, and, and I am uh, uh, of Cephas, and I of Christ. So everybody want to be somebody. But verse 13, is Christ divided? So look how this stuff sneaks up in, in the church. This is just one form of examples. Here it was an example of baptism. But there are many things that we can get caught up in instead of having that one mind. The same walk. It's not the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, says common in the book of Jude. Common salvation. Then why is it common to you and uncommon to others? Why some folks got the Holy Ghost and some folks that say they got the Holy Ghost and now we all get along. Y'all, it has not changed. Righteousness does not have fellowship with unrighteousness. You know, it amazes me, family, how we are so deceived by religious people uh, because they say they saved. We even can put something out there we call tongues, but we know it's gibberish. And God's a God of just watch the lies. Hear the words. People can be going through, but at least, God, I want to be delivered. God can work with that. But there are people that have made up their mind, I do not need God. 
I am fine as is. But you and I that's involved with Christ, we need to bring resolve. Remember y'all, do we fast for folks anymore? Jesus. It's, it used to be common, now it's rare. We are more feasting in the world than in the famine with God. The attitude have changed with the saints of God. Moses put it out like this. I rather be with the children and choose the affliction with God's children than to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I don't want to be known as a friend of the world. I'd rather go through and be afflicted than at least I'm with the people of God. Everybody at some point, family, got to give up their gifts. That I have nothing, God. I have nothing. But here I come with my little old nothing. <laughs> and will you be my potter? Because I'm bringing my clay. Look, this hunk of clay. Look, you made from the dirt. When God gives you the Holy Ghost, you ain't nothing but a bunch of clean dirt. You're still dirt no matter how you put it. And you only cleanse by the blood of the Lamb. But you're still dirt. That's why we can prove it. Don't take a bath for a minute. <laughs> He would not only rub, whoa! got to keep telling folks, I don't care if they don't want to hear it. I got, the, look, the word break down everybody. Y'all, I remember I, I came back and told Sister Brown, I went to go see someone to go minister to them. Guess where they were? Over the dope dealer's house. I said, but God, you brought me to preach the word. He said, that's right, preach it. So they coming in buying. This man don't even know me. First time I'm meeting him. But the person I'm with the seed knew me. So everybody coming in buying dope. I'm preaching. So they come in. Come and get the dope. I said, wait a minute. This is in his house. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, you ain't here to buy the dope. What? Who are you? I'm a man of God. I'm here to preach to. I said, before you go, we're in a hurry, we're in a hurry. I said, you ain't in a hurry. Stop. Everybody that came to get dope eventually started preaching. <laughs> One man said, where you come from? He said, you make me want to preach. I said, start preaching. I said, start preaching to the other dope folks in here. Look, y'all pay attention. I ain't just saying do this now, but they over there firing up their blunts all in my face. <laughs> Look, they over there doing like this. <sniffs> Keep preaching. I like that. Man, you something else. And I pray, God, God, don't let me come out here high. <laughs> Keep me high and hidden. When I got home, I told Sister Bob, I smell me. Do I smell like smoke or anything? She said, no, you don't. I said, thank you, Jesus. He hid me. I said, because I was all up in the dope house. And I'm wondering, I hope the police don't come up in here. Everybody going to jail high is going to look like a, the classic preacher <laughs> over the dope house. And I stayed there for three hours. Look, even some, the dope men had ran out. They said they'd be back. One guy that was doing the dope, he said, if you come back over there, I live four doors over. Would you come to my house? Look, caught up in the dope because they want to hear the gospel. One man, big, big time, in the dope, he said, you know what, I was supposed to be a preacher. I said, why do you think I'm talking to you mainly? Because you're supposed to preach the gospel. Why is it so this your house you can't tell me to shut up? 
because God is for me. Look, look like that's the last thing you're trying to make your money. And I'm disturbing the whole process. And one man said, we just got to go, we just got to go. I said, stop, you don't have to go. You have to stay here because I'm here to preach the gospel. You hear me, family? You can't be like nobody else. If you're going to be like somebody else, then you ain't going to be preaching this Jesus. You got to come with Jesus and make a difference. And let, and let and drop it on them. Jesus, you can have this. It's all yours. Look, I've given them thy word. That's all they want from you. Thy word is truth. Now walk away saying, sanctify them with the word. Separate them, God, and use them. Let the word do what it do, y'all. Don't try to change the word. Don't try to make it happen. Let the word make it happen. Praise the Lord. I don't care what you're going through. Keep talking Jesus. Amen. Till one day you're going to say, surely this is the son of God. Oh, I got it now, God. I got it now. Stay with him until he got me a breakthrough. Praise the Lord. I almost finished here, loved ones. <coughs> he says that in verse four, uh, 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. For all these old clever folks, he's God, if you just preach my word, I'll mess them all up. Look, did he not show Goliath, you don't have the power you think? Look, I'll do this so foolish. So David stayed with the word as he knew it. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And let God take it from there. And look how the battle now became simple because the battle is the Lord's. Now look, look at our issues, y'all. I come to you, God, with my issue, whatever it is. And I come to you trusting you to set me free. Okay, now let's put it on others. I come to you concerning others. I come to you concerned about their welfare in the midst of their warfare. Set them free. And go on and give them the glory and keep on going. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, don't you know this for yourself, especially you that are seasoned. There are people you pray that God saved, though you may not have seen them ever again, but in your spirit you believe God has saved. Don't have to see them, but it's confirmed in your spirit. I believe when I walk away, God going to change them, though I may never see them ever again, except in glory. Amen, loved ones. Amen. Still reading on here, loved ones, at the uh, b uh, middle part of verse 20. He says, have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? This is God going beyond men's intellect. Don't we use our wisdom and intellect? I can't. I can't be delivered. I can't change. That's our wisdom. A word needs to be given that goes beyond our wisdom. That will change. Praise the Lord. Amen. Remember, how can I be looking for this joy, 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 when God said, encourage yourself? Amen. And encourage yourself. Amen. That means that it never left. I just got my Christ divided. Amen. How can peace leave when he told peace, I leave? How can it leave? Christ got divided. Makes sense, don't it? Christ got divided. And a house divided, we know it cannot stay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 23, he says, But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto those that should have received, uh, it's going to stand against them instead of standing for them. But you preach the word nevertheless. So know this, y'all, that you when you minister unto people, they don't want I don't want it, I don't want it, it'll be a stumbling block to them. Instead of a stepping stone. But at least now you've preached it anyway. See, anytime you preach it, it's gonna work. So when they get into judgment, you heard the word. Praise the Lord. 
So God let them know when you hear it on earth, judge yourself that you need not be judged. So you and I need to put it out whether they want to hear it or not. Even in season and out of season, he says to preach the word. Amen. Uh, and verse number 24 still, he says, But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. He says, for ye see your calling. Uh, amen. Everybody know their calling? Because I'm going to give it to you. Stay with this. Because your calling, God just, he add other things. But your calling is the ministry of reconciliation. That's it. He says, for all of you have been given the ministry of reconciliation. That's your calling. I, Pastor, I don't know why I'm called. Now you know. You call to reconcile. You call to fix some stuff. Amen. So don't get dis get discouraged when God brings you all kind of broken stuff. Amen. I'm so tired of all this broken stuff. Well, you are, aren't you a fixer? Is not Christ a quicker picker upper? Try to say that three times. Praise the Lord. Amen, loved ones. Amen. So you preach Christ crucified. He died to do the fixing. Amen. He, he lets you know your wisdom can't do it. I'm telling you, y'all, I'm trying to bring you back the old way. It wasn't broke. So man decided he want to fix it. He ain't fix it. He don't like it because it requires you getting involved. In public and in private. It requires your involvement. People are trying to get involved with all the things that don't mean a heal of beings to God. It just give us some glory. Amen, loved ones. So, look, you know, look out there in ministry. It look like ain't no glory. And look how uh, uh, Brother Clint said it. Out there a miracle came. But a man is speaking about his healing. And he wasn't doing nothing but letting his light shine. Praise the Lord. But in the field, in the vineyard. Amen, family. Now, I'm telling you, the reason why... Physical afflictions, weapons formed against pastors, it's not prospering it's because I'm depending on God for life. So I ain't just depending on him. I'm living a life that keeps me alive. Amen. Hear it, y'all. Before Jesus was, uh, God was birthed out in this flesh, he said this is what's going to happen to him. A man of sorrow. Try being that. Acquainted with grief. Look, that, ain't mean, that don't mean you just have a circumstance here and there. That means all day, all night, all evening, sorrow and grief. Look what's added. He said he shall be oppressed. Look what's added. He shall be afflicted. Look what's added. He was smitten of God. And now, go, do my will. But he decided not to live in none of that. That's why for all of us, in him you live. Move and have your being. Thank God for good foods and medicines, but that ain't it. <coughs> My God. Hallelujah. So let's drop down here to verse number 27, saints. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen. Are you being despised by anything and anybody? I'm here to tell you you've been chosen also. Jesus said they hated me. They're going to hate you. Don't think it's strange. Amen. He says, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. God going to turn it all around, in other words. Amen. Look at this, y'all, but he got to drop this on us. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Hey, most churches, they have flesh glory. F f flesh praise. Amen. Flesh prayers. <laughs> and 
God's God, of, I can't get glory. Amen. Verse 30, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And this is what most of you have been talking about during the testimony service, verse 31, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Let him glory in the Lord. Amen. Look, it don't matter, saints. He is God of, are there any afflicted? Let him call on the oaths. Are there any and it don't matter, y'all. Are they, he, he tell you what to do, saints. Uh, look, uh, are there any that I said, uh, God, uh, look, get some prayer. But what he's saying is, I don't leave you in this. You leave yourself by not incorporating the involvement of Christ. Are any Mary singing? There's a whole lot of people that are happy ain't singing. Praise the Lord. You should find you a good old song that fit uh, uh, your spirit and wear it out. Why do you think pastor be singing all them songs? Same song. I get glory out of it. I've been through too much not to know my soul ain't anchored. Though the storms keep on raging. <laughs> if I do song is, I won't complain. <laughs> What I'm saying is, God is trying to convince you, get your own song. Amen. Camp out, live there. Maybe, and just, just know it for yourself. That God is good. Make up one. I never heard that song. I have. That's your own new song. When you get to glory, He's giving you a new song anyway. Amen. What? A song that fits your spirit. Praise the Lord. You ought to get a new one that fits your spirit right now. Amen, loved ones. Y'all, I don't want nobody to misinterpret what happened on last Sunday when I said don't talk to pastor. I was only talking about for that service. Then, Come on and find God. Amen. Uh, look, the pastor, part of what he do is talk to you. But I want you to know God for yourself. Praise the Lord. Know God for yourself, saints of God. Keep on seeking God that, I'm, that I have to keep seeking. Amen. After a while, you know, you can take vacation too long and get tired. Mm -hmm. Amen. And now I think you need another vacation. You, you took them too long. Amen. Amen. Give yourself a chance to get back to work. Amen. You hear me, loved ones? Some people, you can be off for a while. You can't wait to get back to work. Amen. And some of us like, and not me. But it depends on your job. Amen. Amen. Working in the vineyard. I can't stay off long. Amen. I hear the calling of God. Amen. Get more involved with Christ's family. So that Christ may bring more resolve to our life. Let's stand, family. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he's going to keep giving us miracles, saints. Remember, the truth of God... Eventually, want you want you and I to run to Him, Amen. Not run away from Him, Amen. Run to the Lord, not from Him, Amen. And um, and before you know, we're gonna give the benediction, and then just sit tight for a few minutes so our pastor can just talk to you. Lord, we thank you for coming in. But most importantly, we thank you for staying in. Thank you for keeping us in spite of. Thank you for going beyond our wisdom. Thank you for being our strength in spite of our weakness. Thank you, God, when all of the names are calling, we can hear you still in a still, small voice. Thank you that you're getting us all focused. That you bring us the necessary peace that go with the character of your children. Thank you for letting us preach a word that people have thought to be foolish. But it is still the power of God unto salvation. To God be the glory. 
to God be the glory. To God be the glory. And that's all we know. We give you the glory. Not that we go in and of ourselves. But we are alive because you live. And because you live, we can face any tomorrow. We thank you for the promotions and the gifts. But God, I thank you for creating in us a clean heart. And renewing a right spirit. And I thank you for speaking to old things and causing them to pass away. And then speaking... And letting us know and the enemy know, behold, all things have become new. So saints, walk with your head up high in Jesus. Walk knowing that God will get his glory out of us. It don't matter what you're dealing with. Know that God is dealing with it also. But walk knowing I'm in the Lord. And the Lord is in me. And we are one. So we are not divided here. And whatever is trying to divide me shall not. God is bringing all the pieces back together. And making me whole right now. Making me it, this, that and other things. Whole right now. But I'm getting more involved. On preaching, ministering. Reconciliation to people. In Jesus' name. Amen, loved ones. Praise the Lord.